and welcome to this week's edition of BOI Weekly. I am Victoria Longjian. The Bank of Industry's quest to empower Nigerians in various sectors of the economy is the reason behind the creation of the BOI Intervention Fund Scheme. The fund aims at empowering micro, small and medium entrepreneurs across the country. Since the disbursement of these loans, many entrepreneurs have taken their businesses to new levels as they continue to access funds from the Bank of Industry. One of such is Mr. Jude Abalaka, who runs Tranos Contracting Limited as a Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer. Tranos is an engineering and manufacturing company based in Lagos. They are also into the manufacture of both electrical and mechanical product. The company offers services in engineering fabrication, maintenance and project management, energy distribution, control and automation. Tranos has four major areas of concentration as they specialize in the manufacture of enclosures, power distribution and protection equipment, telecoms power systems and the oil and gas services. Now, in this week's edition of the program, we take a look at how Tranos Contracts Limited and how they are adding value to the socio-economic development of the country. Once again, welcome to the program. Welcome back. Now, our team visited the factory of Tranos Contracts Limited at number 22A Guinness Road, Ogba, Ikeja, in the heart of Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. With an initial facility of 550 million naira and a second facility of 350 million naira from the Bank of Industry, Mr. Jude Abalaka talks to us about the impact of the credit facility on his business and how the journey actually began. Watch this. Tranos is an engineering and manufacturing leader, adding value to lives through innovative solutions. Customer satisfaction is a key factor of the company's quality management system. From the deployment of high-precision CNC machines and the engagement of competent personnel to the institution of standard error-proof processes, Tranos guarantees the quality of its products and services with a quality management system certified to meet the requirements of the ISO 9001-2015 standard. The officer of Tranos takes our team down memory lane as he explains how the company started. Tranos, we, we started about 14 years ago and um, the whole idea of Tranos from the beginning was to try and um, set up an organization where people can come together and be able to provide value for customers. So the overriding idea was to be able to provide value to customers. Um, looking at staff strength, I think we probably started with three people, including myself, of course. So we just uh, we had a small office then in VI. Uh, we started um, by uh, trying to do things uh, in, in terms of uh, project management and some procurement that we're doing for oil and gas back then. Um, now, we wanted to provide value. So what has driven us um, across time to date has been trying to find out what, where can we provide value? What value can we provide for customers? So by asking and answering that question, we've come up with ways, we've learned a lot of things, driven by knowledge to invest in people, invest in equipment, invest in processes that can help us provide value. So that basically covers uh, what has brought us to where we are today. In, term, in terms of staff strength, I think as of today we are about um, 170 people because um, we, we do have, at times we go as up to 200, a little over 200, when we have uh, installation jobs or repair to do for customers on site. So we are an engineering and manufacturing company. And what that means is that we, we design things and we manufacture those things for customers. Uh, those things will revolve around um, enclosures for various applications, both mechanical and electrical applications, power distribution equipment, that's um, electrical panels, electrical uh, control panels, protection panels of various types. Um, we make uh, gaskets for mainly for uh, oil and gas and petrochemical applications, we make cable trays and ladders, we make warehouse racks for storages. Now, all our products are based on 
knowledge, meaning that you study what the customer needs, you study where the pain point is for the customer, and then you design a product to solve that problem. The drive was to solve problems. And um, when you're trying to solve problems in, in a sustainable manner, meaning that you, have, you want to be able to do this for years to come, you need to build a system. That system will involve people, it will involve uh, processes, and it will involve a lot of knowledge. So the drive was basically to provide value, and that drives everything we do. We want to provide value. That's, that's the first thing that comes into our minds when we're trying to deal with things, when, when we're speaking to customers or when we're trying to respond to customers. Because someone walks in and says, oh, can you do this for me? The, the thing he's trying to tell you is that I have a pain. So what we need to do is to find that pain and solve the problem. And that's basically it for us. The, it, it's been quite good. In fact, um, up until a few years ago, we never really used to do any marketing or sales. Practically all our sales will be uh, from word of mouth and um, referrals. And that shows you how uh, customers view what we've done for them. So basically, you do something for one person, he speaks to another person about it. And in fact, we've had people come to us with problems that we, have, we, we hadn't solved for anyone else before. And that's actually how our, our range of products have grown. We've grown on the basis of identifying pain points for customers. Because someone comes and says, oh, I need a certain kind of enclosure. When you build it for him, you begin to realize that, OK, there are many others like him who also need that solution. So that's how we've grown. So looking at uh, feedback from customers, they've been mostly positive. Of course, you have customers, uh, some are not happy with price. Some uh, might have issues that um, in the course of delivering to them. But at the end of the day, our focus is to make sure that the customer is satisfied fully when, when we are done with delivering our uh, products or services. So we, we are very um, focused on that because at the end of the day, we are here for the customers. So we try as much as possible to exceed the expectation of our customers. And based on that, we've been able to grow from there. So our products are, um, first and foremost, um, geared towards delivering power to customers. So we, we, we make uh, various types of electrical panels and uh, switch gear for customers. And that basically helps take power to where it's needed. We also manufacture uh, cable trays and ladders, which is also used for power distribution for uh, routing cables. Um, in addition to that, we have um, a range of gas generators, which we now manufacture first for the telecoms market. And those generators are designed for remote applications. So we have um, specifically designed gas generators that can work remotely with minimal um, intervention. And they run on LPG. LPG is your cooking gas, so you, you basically are using the same gas you used to cook to power your equipment. Um, and if you look at all that, that's why I said when you, you asked, I talked about power. Now, our enclosures are also used a lot for power, so we have customers that use our enclosures for uh, generators, for, for protection and sound uh, attenuation on generators. We have customers that use our enclosures for other uh, power distribution so you have a customer that wants to build his own panel. So he comes to us to buy his own enclosures. We make enclosures for uh, meter boxes as well. So you know the meter in your house, it has to be protected in a particular well-designed um, enclosure. We make that as well. So you will see that about um, roughly 80% of our products are geared towards power. Our gaskets are also used uh, in the oil and gas industry, which is energy, basically. Uh, and um, we also have the racks. Now, racks are more industrial. It's for storage, so I'll say industrial and commercial. But you will see that uh, a lot of our products are designed to help one way or the other in either generating power or distributing. The Nigerian power challenge is not a technology or a technical problem. It's a commercial problem. So um, it's similar to, you know, um, years ago, we had um, um, NITEL, and there were, there were issues with uh, communicating. What changed wasn't a new technology, really, per se. Yes, GSM was relatively new then, but that wasn't what changed. What changed was that 
the industry was commercialized such that it was able to attract enough investment to solve the problem. So similarly, in the power sector, what we have is there are no commercial incentives for, for a lot of investments to come in to change what we have. So um, it's not really, if it was a, a, a technology issue, we can say, okay, we can come in. And yes, we are doing that in a way with the gas um, um, generators that we have, which easily replaces um, diesel generators and gives um, a better return on investment at the end of the day. However, um, it will not suffice for the whole range of demands that are, are, are available for power consumers. So uh, bottom line, the Nigerian power problem is a commercial problem, not a, a, a technical one. From an initial staff strength of 14, Tranus now boasts of well over 100 workers as a managing director speaks on the services provided by the company. We, we don't work with short-term benefits in mind because what it is is that in a lot of the things we do, we could have easily just um, gotten, say, a partner somewhere or get a manufacturer somewhere to say, okay, oh, we make um, warehouse racks. We get a warehouse rack partner somewhere in, in Europe or in Asia. And all we just do is we receive orders and import. I mean, that's an easy way of doing these things. And you make some margin on it. It's business. But we decided that rather than do that, let's learn how to produce these things ourselves and even improve on what others are doing outside. And looking at it from that perspective, I think that's what differentiates us from a lot of the people. So depending on the on the market you are looking at or the, or the group of products, um, the product category you are looking at, we compete differently. But one key thing that we hold is to say that I don't just want to supply you this thing or solve your problem. I want to understand how you will use it. I want to understand how I can improve on the product so that you can have a better time using the product. So that, I, I think, clearly stands us out from everybody else because we have that clear dedication. It's, it's not attractive because it doesn't make money for you immediately. It's a long-term thing because we believe that at the end of the day, that process will get us to be able to provide better value for customers and also help us grow as an organization. So challenges in business, especially in an environment like Nigeria, is continuous. So I'm not going to be able to say I've solved some of the problems, but I'll think of some of the lingering challenges we have. And I think, um, for me, the, the biggest challenge would be supply chain. For a manufacturer, you, you are basically getting input materials, raw materials, and you're either converting them into some other stuff or you are incorporating them into an assembly. Now, the thing is this. If you are, if you're a manufacturer, right, one small pin missing from the, the full uh, bill of materials of what you are producing means that you, haven't, you can't finish that production. And in a country like Nigeria, where um, there are limited um, availability of support industries, meaning industries that can manufacture some of your own inputs, especially in our own case, it means that we have to bring a lot of things in. The challenge is that importation, clearing of goods, is a lot of pain. So I would think that that's one of the major challenges we face. Because so you will have, um, um, we try to do um, what we call a, a lean manufacturing process. And in lean manufacturing, they do, there's another concept called just in time. So you go to a factory, say, in a place like Japan, like um, um, one of our partners, Yanma. They don't keep inventory for more than four days, meaning that um, what I need to produce on Thursday arrives in my factory on Monday. So it doesn't stay in my storage for more than four days. We can't even dream of that. And they can say that because even if the goods are coming into, um, are coming into Japan from, say, Germany, for example, they've planned it such that it will arrive four days before. And that also means that they expect that, OK, clearing of goods will take probably for them 24 hours. And it always takes 24 hours. But we can't say that. So while they are storing goods for four days, we probably have to store goods for six months. 
So you are tying down money. Now, it even gets worse because at times you are planning that, okay, uh, these goods will probably get to me in three months. So I place an order. It takes about um, maybe a month to produce, and then it takes about six weeks to ship. Then I'll clear in two weeks. The problem is that that shipping and clearing is usually unpredictable. So you will plan something for a particular duration, but you are never sure. So you always have issues with um, you are producing, you have to stop because uh, the raw materials you were expecting did not come in. So you know those sort of disruptions have a, a, a significant impact on a manufacturing operation. Um, then also, we, we've, uh, one area we had a challenge with then was um, finding the right personnel. Now, we were coming into a market where uh, we needed to produce things that weren't being done. So a lot of times, you, you, you see that the things we decide to produce will always be firsts, where no one has actually done it before. So you, you bring in a machine to do uh, certain things. And ideally, what you want to do is to say, oh, OK, there are already knowledgeable people in this area that I can just simply I can just place an advert and then select the people I want. But it doesn't work that way, because they aren't knowledgeable people in those areas. So what you then have to do is that you have to now take a couple of steps back and say, OK, I can't find the knowledgeable people. That means that I have to train. And um, you know, we talked about knowledge earlier. That's part of why it works for us, because rather than um, what uh, in other countries people will typically do is uh, find an experienced person to recruit, what we have to do is we know that we can't find experienced people. So we have to start with people who can learn. So, and that's where uh, ability to learn. So uh, as part of our core values is this ability to learn and continuously improve on yourself. So we, we find people that are like that, and we, we give the necessary training to be able to um, run our equipment and run the plants we have. And that's important for us. It's a bit of a challenge, because it means that you are starting from, as I said, you are taking a couple of steps back to start further down the line. And also, it also means that we have to be patient with people to learn and come up to speed. Our team embarks on a guided tour of the factory, including the engineering department, where products are designed to the customer's specification. Production manager explains the various stages of the process. This is a fabrication company and this is where everything comes together. In here we have the mechanical assembly area and the generator assembly area. Over here what they are doing is they are assembling a TG1000 generator. Uh, they have four stages over there. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 where they mount all the components. At the end of the day we put in the oil and then the testing is done which completes the process. On the other side is panel assembly. They are fixing the uh, frames and all the side walls to complete the panel. It's actually an electrical panel, but for this purpose, the client, hasn't, uh, the client doesn't have the components here, so this is going to be installed on the site. For what we're doing here, we're just putting the components, the mechanical components together. Over here to the front is a finished product. We have all our finished products. We have uh, a feeder pillar, we have wall mounted enclosures, we also have some uh, freestanding enclosures here and some panels that have electrical components in them. Over here we have our cable processing area, this is where we process our bus bars, we also process our cables uh, and this, uh, these components go into panels that we have to do electrical assembly for in here. So we have the capability to do electrical assembly in here uh, or we can also mount this uh, component in the uh, client's uh, facility, depending on what the client wants. The production manager takes our team to another factory where finished products are displayed. We're putting electrical components as well. So it has the enclosure itself, and it also has a stand for positioning the, the uh, feeder pillar. We also have uh, lashes here for lifting the feeder pillar. Now, this is a finished product. It's wrapped. It's already uh, approved by the quality, and this is ready for shipment. Over here, we have our electrical panel. 
So this is a 40 amp panel and it's ready. The comp Two senior staff of Trano's manufacturers explain their roles in the production process. Uh, we work with different departments. We work with the sales team, production, quality and supply chain. Uh, when we receive a request from the supply chain, the sales team in form of a request for quotation, we prepare a bid of material in, request, in response to that uh, request. And um, we, we have an ERP system of um, GSS, GSS ERP system, whereby we prepare this bill of material and sell to the sales team. Aside from the bill of material, we equally provide um, manufacturing drawings for the production team. When we receive a request from the sales team, we convert that request into a 3D CAD model, something like this. Uh, we have different product line. This is one of our product line, uh, a low voltage switch kelp. That was modeled based on the client's uh, request. We work with electrical, we have in-house in electrical team that give us a schematic and a component arrangement diagram, which we convert into a 3D model. And from the 3D model, we, we provide different drawing for the production team to produce. Aside from the switch gear, we equally have other, mod other models. My, uh, we have a couple of softwares. We have Autodex Inventor, Autodex Design Suit. We have SolidWorks, and uh, we equally have Solid Edge from from Siemens. So we have other product line. This is a transformer enclosure. This is a transformer enclosure done for one of our clients recently. The client brought their transformer in-house and we took the necessary dimensions. Can you um, protect? We took, we took the necessary dimension and the transfer of the transformer and we did an analysis to check this, uh, the structural integrity of the, of the base to ensure that it can sustain the weight of the transformer. This is one of our product line, the uh, warehouse rack that was done for a client recently. We got the layout of the client's workshop and we optimized the layout to provide the, uh, the suitable rack for their system. So what we do majorly is to work with client requests and to provide solu engineering solution for the manufacturing to bring the product back to life. The managing director speaks on their challenges just as he appreciates the Bank of Industry for its intervention. In terms of financing, BUI is, is open and um, we've worked with them now for about four years or something or thereabout, maybe a little more than that. Because of the, the professionalism that I have seen there, because a lot of people still assume that um, it's not possible to get introduced to BOI and be able to walk through the process to get your facility. But it does happen. So my advice to um, young entrepreneurs would be, don't believe what you hear. Try and go in and try for yourself. Because if you have a genuine business case, I believe that BOI can support you. I think it's a partnership, and they also understand that. So we are looking at the present, midterm, and future. And I think that this partnership we have with BOI will continue for a long time to come. And um, how, we are, how that is going to be is that um, we expect to still work with BOI. So let's continue to build this partnership for the long term. Trinus is built on the dream of establishing an organization where individuals are given the opportunity to leverage their talents and abilities and joining these abilities with those of colleagues, teammates and state-of-the-art technology to provide world-class products and services. They are an organization focused on bringing the best out of their workforce, individuals and businesses through logical and creative thinking using state-of-the-art technology to provide world-class products and services. And that is why the company prides itself as one that thinks further. Welcome back. Now, the interventions from the Bank of Industry has in no small measure made tremendous positive impact on the lives of the beneficiaries and the socio-economic development of the nation. And there's more where that came from. Now, are you an entrepreneur out there or know anyone in need of support to grow his or her business? Kindly visit any of the branches of the bank closest to you or log on to their website at www.boi.ng. 
You can also follow the bank on all social media platforms as displayed on your screen. And I hope you join us next week for another edition of the program. I am Victoria Longjin, and I'll see you next time.